Man, he's in everything. He's the man with the plan. All right, guys, we are back for another review for My Adventures of Superman. This is episode six of the second season. Got a full stack host lineup for you guys. First on deck, Dizzy Brown. What's up, Dizzy? Hello, hello. I'm excited to be back with more My Adventures of Superman. This episode was great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And last but not least, Vanessa Shark. What's up? Hey, I'm excited to talk with my adventure Superman. I've been trying to get on a review, but it's been chaotic. Chaos. Chaos. It is in the galaxy. So, yeah, this coming off the last episode, this was freaking nuts because the mm-hmm. last episode ended in such a bang where we understand that Kara literally kidnapped Clark and we didn't know who she was bringing him to. She kept saying that she's bringing him to her father. And we were kind of like, this doesn't add up. And this episode kind of allows them time to try to process kind of their own lives. Like he got to really showcase who he comes from, but also the in-betweens, because there was some truth between what she was saying about them trying to hold him back for certain reasons. And then she getting the real revelation that, okay, I'm going to show you what we're all about, what our empire is all about. And she getting revelation of her own. So as far as like, the back and forth between Clark and Carr on this. How did you guys think about this, their relationship in this episode? Mm. So um, I really enjoyed it. I feel like it was a really interesting take. I mean, I really loved the, how different it was and what I'm, what I'm used to personally. Um, I don't know how people are going to feel about, you know, the whole storyline that they're going with, but me personally, I, I'm really liking it. I really am liking it. I like this version of Supergirl. It's very different, again, than what I'm used to. But um, it was really interesting to see kind of Clark being the person to kind of wake her up. Obviously, that's bound to happen. But um, out of everything that was kind of happening, it was just really cool to see her, you know, kind of being excited or being actually happy to have someone who is real someone that she can actually connect with like like they legit had a snowball fight like that's so that's so family oriented <laughs> and it, it's like it, i don't know it was just really sweet and you see a moment where she blushes where it's just not obviously not that type of blush but it was just a pure joy sweet. blush you know and it was just right. it was really cool to see you know considering that what she's been going through is clearly insane it was it was probably a good break for her but I, i'm really liking that whole dynamic and it's going to be really interesting to see how they kind of close the season out uh with certain decisions but yeah 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 um i there's been a lot of iterations of supergirl and i've read i think i've read almost i think i read all of them at least bits and pieces so i like what they're doing with this supergirl like some people will be like supergirl is supposed to be like Clark's nice uh (laughs) little cousin and it's like actually supergirl is if you write her correctly she is very angry because she actually was older when she lost her whole entire Mm -hmm. planet and she lost a lot of sunburns and also lost candor and like her family on there in the bottle city so like supergirl's been through a a lot more trauma than superman has and like in their early life and so that fuels a lot of her like stories i think the red lantern supergirl is such an interesting thing like anything that fuels that they 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 tap into her rage the way they're going about with this is so interesting though because I'm gonna say this very carefully. <laughs> but I I I think the 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 things we see her come to realization is something I'm uh, we we're seeing a, we see a lot of in like our in like parallel to our real life where someone buys into something like the idea of something and it's like all else nothing can nothing can break this. This is us, we are this is everything. And then something, someone pulls the lifts their eye like lifts the shade from their eyes and they're like oh my god i have my i have blood on my hands i right. think this is interesting and it's interesting timing and if you catch my drift you catch my drift but i think this is interesting to have this specific cara because she fully is like empire we are we are going to spread peace through it's all fascist bullshit like that's classic fascism that's the empire who's the most what's the most famous empire in fiction the empire in star wars like you yeah. can't like get more evil than that the references are there it's so fascinating mm-hmm. and so you have this just genuine 
boy scout who was just like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to meet your dad. <laughs> like, and then you have this angsty teenager who's just like, oh, everyone, I'm right. I'm right. No one else is wrong. <laughs> and it's just an interesting dynamic. I actually really enjoy it because I think it's best when like Clark's older, but he's still like younger than her yeah. and she's older, but she's still younger. And it's such a fun like thing to play. And they're really playing it up in this, in this. And I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like you can't watch this episode without if you've seen Invincible, like it's like bar for bar at times. And it, it it's mm -hmm. just so cool to kind of see the similarities where it's like like you think one person's good and then it turns out that they're here to conquer the place. And then they have like a whole army full of other Kryptonian Viltrumites, whatever you want to call it. And it's just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the one person has to realize what the hell they're they're actually doing. You know, before they snap, I don't know. It was just really cool to kind of. Obviously, we know what came first, but at the end of the day, it's just to see this animated to to the point where it's like on par and where it's just mm -hmm. giving out the same exact vibes. Yeah. It's really cool to see. Like, I, I really love. That. Also, the like as someone who was raised on Toonami and like Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Ronin Wars, all that stuff at four p.m. and on. This show like is like such a beautiful successor to that and marries like all the old animated styles with like dc and i like when he got punched by the the green lantern that the way the green lantern was forming its weapons was so sailor yeah. moon coded it was so dead moon circus coded yeah. oh my even, god even the way so he cool. suits up it was giving me sailor moon vibes yes. even earlier on yes. where he would do the magical the girl transformation yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> i am up Everything about this show is so much fun. It's all the like, it just hits my little millennial heart. So like everything, it just reminds me of like, like I'm sitting down and watching Toonami again. I love this show. <laughs> yeah, at its, at its core, this is absolutely an anime. And I, I do love the fact that watching them having their snowball fight was just so, I don't know. It felt like this is the characters, like at their core. Because it was kind of like she wanted him to kind of, she wanted to play with them. Like, oh, like, I want to see how he, like, she was pr pranking him initially. She was like, like, oh man, I can't breathe. And he was such a voice guy, he wanted to protect her. And then it turned into like this back and forth, but she also wanted to kind of test his limits because she's not able to be around anybody to test her limits. And so she's looking for something. And I think that the interesting thing is that from the last episode, I was kind of like, she could have just went in a different way, but she wanted to know who Clark was. And so this whole entire episode, I think that he's, she's trying to bring him into her world. But it's kind of like he also is such a nice person that even when he went to her room, he was like, oh, snap, what is this? He, she's kind of <laughs> like the big little sister, like literally. That's, that's classic big little sister. But the interesting thing about it is they both get different revelations from each other. Um, for her, she's like, you're, you're tame. You know what I mean? Like, you've never let loose fully. And she doesn't understand or comprehend, like, limitations at all. And so for him, it was like, oh, yeah, we're playing catch. And she's like, why is he treating you like you can't do better than that? Like, I don't understand. Like, why are they trying to hold you back? And she meant it. Like, it wasn't a slight. She was like, these earthlings look at you like you're lesser. And you're more than that. And it's interesting because he's like, have you ever felt a moment where, you know, they looked at you fully as you are? And he immediately thought to Lois, but because they're not vibing and Lois has got a lot going on and they haven't been cohesive this season, like he couldn't even think about it. It was almost like a trauma trigger for him. And so he kind of like walked away angrily. And then the other side of that, which is what I want to kind of talk to you guys about, is like her realization of what's happening um the fact is that she took him to a planet she wanted to show like how this planet is thriving and it's like legit destroyed Family. and it was just like she did not comprehend it she was like i don't understand what's going on and he's like is this what you guys do and she was lost and from that point you know they went back and everything happened with him but as she, the, towards the end of the episode, she went back to all the other planets and went back to Thanagar and really started to see. Like, it was weird because I guess he made a mask over her seeing, like, the visual of her mm -hmm. being the person that destroyed this entire civilization. Um, it's just insane. Because mm -hmm. I don't think we've seen Supergirl like this, honestly, 
from animated form since I think Batman Superman Apocalypse, which I love that because it showed how strong Supergirl really is and also different levels of her emotionally and mentally. I think Smallville tried to do certain levels of that as well, but I don't know. I, I'm really intrigued to see how they pinpoint when Brainiac picked her up and also how this started because I, Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. I didn't think that Kryptonians had the ability of being able to fly. I th is is that wrong or true? Has they changed that yeah. in comics recently? It depends. Or? It depends. They can fly. Um, Kryptonians can't fly on their own planet. They can. Yeah, like, when right. They go to our sun. They can. Yeah. Um, and that's and the I, thing. As far as when I. No, go ahead. No, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> I think what as for because her original thing is like she got stuck in the Phantom Zone. And like and ended up aging up there, and I, so I assume he caught her ship at some point before it went off to meet to Earth or whatever to catch up with Superman. So I assume that's why she calls him father because he's been raising her, or he's just straight brainwashed her from the beginning, which is also another possibility. There was like um, an episode of Black Mirror that reminded me of where there are soldiers. I think they put like implants in them, or they put like something in their glasses where they like thought they were shooting and killing like alien zombie things or whatever but they were actually like killing people when they took the chips out of the, the the like it was like an episode of black mirror i can't remember what season it was it was an older season but it was from the netflix era so it's like it's the american version but it mm -hmm. reminded me a lot of that when she was like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. like it, something was like it was like a filter over her brain it reminded me of that black mirror episode and that's like has to be i felt so bad for her because it has to be there's a reason why evil people do, or bad people don't admit that they, they've done wrong because the the acceptance of that and then the holy shit of like yeah. the consequences of your behavior and like she didn't just like steal someone's husband or like shoot a dog she murdered multiple planets yeah and didn't know about it she didn't choose to do that so that's like she was not used. her own that's agency. so crazy was, yeah man. as a weapon which is a, i cannot imagine and i hope that they are like they explore that and like don't just like write it off and like few like like she needs to like work through that like that has to be something that is to be worked through you know and, and so i i wonder how, how that'll be like how put that'll play out yeah sorry go ahead. and uh the one thing that they have i know they did this in smallville too was uh silver kryptonite which was also developed by brainiac which is something that causes hallucinations it, mm. it like like kind of it messes up with the kryptonians kind of mental status yeah and um so that's kind of like it would be cool if they kind of went that route considering brainiacs involved and i don't know if i'm tripping but uh, uh her eyes kind of look they like do great well, yeah yeah, they yeah, do great, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. again i'm not as you know familiar from the last episode and stuff like that but uh oh. compared to what's going on here but realistically <laughs> it just it would be cool if they went that route off topic a little bit the thanagar reference was extremely cool you were mentioning mm -hmm. uh, like the possibility of a Justice League, and we've we've talked about this in the past. But uh, two characters that are you know have that Thanagar heritage, if you will, you know that's just a um, I don't know if that's a proper word to say that is a uh, Hawkman and Hawkgirl, who are just two extremely cool characters. So it was really cool to see kind of uh, how they kind of had Krypton relevant to everything there, you know? Because I mean, if they did decide to do a storyline down the road, I mean. You could have both Hawkman and Hawk Girl tight that, you know, yeah. a Kryptonian mm -hmm. is trying to be all friendly, you know? Like, it, it'd be it, the possibilities with this show, are, it's just endless, you know? Because they, they've been just doing so many different things and, and the art style, so different. Everything's so different. And it's just, I love that they're doing their own thing. It's so awesome. Yeah. I think one of the mm -hmm. things that I found that this season is that last season, like, it was hope. But this season, with the introduction of Lex Luthor, there's this, I think, ringing in people's ear of possible fear of what he could do. And it's like, now that there's so much collateral damage everywhere, and it's not even directly Clark, but even like last episode, like seeing what a Kryptonian can do on Earth if they're like unchecked, like it just literally gives validation to what Lex is saying. And so people like Bruce Wayne, people like the other Thanagarians, like there are going to be certain heroes that are going to look at this Kryptonian, like, and I think that's going to be an interesting story because we've already seen like Lois is very tempted to go to Gotham. 
Like, I think she's actually going to go by the end of this season. I really think they mm-hmm. they wouldn't just bring Vicky Vale in here and and Saint Silver, Saint her. Cloud, yeah, right. Like mm-hmm. they, they are absolutely going to take her there. But I think what would be so fascinating is if Bruce looked at him like a legit threat. Like I I can't completely trust you. I don't trust anybody, but I I, I think yeah. you are more of a danger than anything, even if you're sincere about it. But it's it's I think that even with seeing the parademon, this is just mm-hmm. there's so many different threads, and I'm so glad it's got a third season. Because I didn't think it would. Mm-hmm. Because what James Gunn's doing and you know him trying to telegraph everything to be completely interconnected there's still these amazing stories that i mean whether they're elsewhere or not like i i really love this show so it, it explores a lot more possibilities but but the last season set up like the fact that it's already in a multiverse so like just because there's a gunverse the gunverse isn't in, isn't the multiverse mm-hmm. itself like gunverse is like there's a multiverse and if you if they play it the way it's like oh we all exist in a universe, multiverse it, it can definitely work out um but i don't think everything was supposed to go like i know they did a lot of new animated projects that were like gonna tie into movies so i don't think every because they have batman cape crusader still happening on amazon so like yeah. those are technically i think those are just going to be like elseworld type of stories but um i don't think every single especially if something's uh super popular already they're not gonna like cut it in this show well, superman and, and lois i was really holding a hope for that but but I cw mean, was in the final season though that's fair yeah. that's fair. yeah cw was that, always man. it was over yeah it was, it was unless they were gonna buy it back and bring it but i think with live action, it's a lot different. Animated, they can like get away with keep like we're not getting. I don't think we're getting ju- Young Justice back, but I think animated gets away with. Oh, no. Um, I know, I know. Oh my God, save your hair looks so good. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the top of the head angle. Okay, yeah, um, he's yeah. Flexible, I... bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was so long. That was an accident. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think because they set up the multiverse last week, I think we they can easily tie in like other shows for sure but yeah. will we be seeing gotham next season for sure they're t- teasing it they're foreshadowing the shit oh, out of gotham. I can't they wait bring in all of bruce's uh flings <laughs> come on now <laughs> yeah, i i don't know i just love this show way too much uh and it keeps on even when i thought like oh like because last episode we talked busy i was like oh they're gonna string this along and be waiting to bring car out are they gonna string along will Clark and Lois had that conversation about possibly Carl. And is this, they just shut that down in one episode. <laughs> and, and I love that about the show. They don't waste any time, but they allow the story to kind of progress in a way that's exciting. Cause we don't really know, mm-hmm. even now that she's got this revelation, I don't know what she's really going to do with it. Um, like, I don't, I don't know what her next steps are. And even more deeper, like I said, like how is earth going to accept them coming back? Um, because I don't know. It's, they're going to come back to a very different earth. I have a feeling like they're going to come back to a much more, uh, alien phobic earth. Yep. That's exactly what I'm thinking. And it's interesting because Jimmy and Lois are off planet now. So they don't know what the heck Luke, Luke They can't Luke even shape the doing. narrative. They can't right. even shape the narrative. They right. can't even help shape the narrative. So that's, that's key. I think because you're going to have Lex. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the season, Lex ends up owning daily planet because it often happens in my comments. So. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. But yeah. Uh what else can we talk about this episode? Any closing thoughts? Anything we like me to bring up? Um, All right. No, so closing thoughts and ratings then. <laughs> Dizzy. Final thoughts, ratings. I I really loved what they what they were doing. I mean, again, Supergirl in that suit was just so fire. It was so tough. It was so cool, man. And that ending scene with her like burning uh Thanagar. I mean, I, that that was like terrifying but at the same time it was cool i'm sorry but um <laughs> yeah i'm gonna give it a an a minus really excited for more yeah vanessa um yeah i like this episode i liked last episode a little bit better but overall the season's been really good um i can't wait to see how Kara reacts but like actually hopefully she can keep fighting off the brain or the whatever because um i want to see like her what, what she actually does and whatever but i'll give this episode an a because i yeah that was good yeah this this is really good man oh shout out to uh kiana uh she's on fear street if you haven't seen fear street oh, she does an amazing shit. job on that she's the voice actress is playing the role of Kara, and she's oh, doing an amazing nice. job so shout out to her but yeah no this 
this is really intense and i think like that last shot of Kara getting that revelation may be one of the darkest things that the show has done at this point um and I, I, I don't know what this means because now that you have like parademons you're including dark side i think that the end of last season i don't think that was Kara that was coming i think that may have been zod but i'm interested to see what that means because the symbol was completely different and either way this show has been great so as far as, for, as far as this episode i give it an a minus to an a this is really good i'm really enjoying it so uh yeah where can everybody find your content vanessa right there oh wait this way <laughs> you can find me <laughs> having a start <laughs> on uh everything instagram twitter bestdark.com multiversecolor.com you can read my articles and stuff team jbs will be reviewing house of dragons with them as well <laughs> all right i'm done <laughs> <laughs> thanks vanessa busy where can everybody find your content Busy brawn everywhere, busy reactions on Instagram, and um, yeah, over here doing reviews on Team JBS. How about them Celtics? Yeah, bro, don't even get me on. Come on now, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna go. Uh, like, subscribe, <laughs> hit the bell button, go and check out these guys. Amazing, I'm a hater. Content. We're gonna go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Ain't nothing on my